Part three, chapter five of Introduction to the Devout Life. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Florence Short. Introduction to the Devout Life by St. Francis de Sales. Part three, chapter five on interior humility to you however my daughter i would teach a deeper humility for that of which i have been speaking is almost more truly to be called worldly wisdom than humility there are some persons who dare not or will not think about the graces with which god has endowed them fearing lest they should become self-complacent and vainglorious but they are quite wrong for if as the angelic doctor says the real way of attaining to the love of god is by a careful consideration of all his benefits given to us then the better we realize these the more we shall love him and inasmuch as individual gifts are more acceptable than general gifts so they ought to be more specially dwelt upon of a truth nothing so tends to humble us before the mercy of god as the multitude of his gifts to us just as nothing so tends to humble us before his justice as the multitude of our misdeeds let us consider what he has done for us and what we have done contrary to his will and as we review our sins in detail so let us review his grace in the same there is no fear that a perception of what he has given you will puff you up so long as you keep steadily in mind that whatever is good in you is not of yourself do mules cease to be clumsy stinking beasts because they are used to carry the dainty treasures and perfumes of a prince what hast thou that thou didst not receive now if thou didst receive it why dost thou glory as if thou hadst not received it on the contrary a lively appreciation of the grace given to you should make you humble for appreciation begets gratitude but if when realizing the gifts god has given you any vanity should beset you the infallible remedy is to turn to the thought of all our ingratitude imperfection and weakness any one who will calmly consider what he has done without god cannot fail to realize that what he has done with god is no merit of his own and so we may rejoice in that which is good in us and take pleasure in the fact but we shall give all the glory to god alone who alone is its author it was in this spirit that the blessed virgin confessed that god had done great things to her only that she might humble herself and exalt him my soul doth magnify the lord she said by reason of the gifts he had given her we are very apt to speak of ourselves as naught as weakness itself as the off-scouring of the earth but we should be very much vexed to be taken at our word and generally considered what we call ourselves on the contrary we often make believe to run away and hide ourselves merely to be followed and sought out we pretend to take the lowest place with the full intention of being honourably called to come up higher but true humility does not affect to be humble and is not given to make a display in lowly words it seeks not only to conceal other virtues but above all it seeks and desires to conceal itself and if it were lawful to tell lies or feign or give scandal humility would perhaps sometimes affect a cloak of pride in order to hide itself utterly take my advice my daughter and either use no professions of humility or else use them with a real mind corresponding to your outward expressions never cast down your eyes without humbling your heart and do not pretend to wish to be last and least unless you really and sincerely mean it i would make this so general a rule as to have no exception only courtesy sometimes requires us to put forward those who obviously would not put themselves forward but this is not deceitful or mock humility and so with respect to certain expressions of regard which do not seem strictly true but which are not dishonest because the speaker really intends to give honour and respect 
to him to whom they are addressed and even though the actual words may be somewhat excessive there is no harm in them if they are the ordinary forms of society though truly i wish that all our expressions were as nearly as possible regulated by real heart feeling in all truthfulness and simplicity a really humble man would rather that some one else called him worthless and good-for-nothing than say so of himself at all events if such things are said he does not contradict them but acquiesces contentedly for it is his own opinion we meet people who tell us that they leave mental prayer to those who are more perfect not feeling themselves worthy of it that they dare not communicate frequently because they do not feel fit to do so that they fear to bring discredit on religion if they profess it through their weakness and frailty while others decline to use their talents in the service of god and their neighbour because forsooth they know their weakness and are afraid of becoming proud if they do any good thing lest while helping others they might destroy themselves but all this is unreal and not merely a spurious but a vicious humility which tacitly and secretly condemns god's gifts and makes a pretext of lowliness while really exalting self-love self-sufficiency indolence and evil tempers ask thee a sign of the lord thy god ask it either in the depth or in the height above so spake the prophet to king ahaz but he answered i will not ask neither will i tempt the lord unhappy man he affects to show exceeding reverence to god and under a pretence of humility refuses to seek the grace offered by the divine goodness could he not see that when god wills to grant us a favour it is mere pride to reject it that god's gifts must needs be accepted and that true humility lies in obedience and the most literal compliance with his will well then god's will is that we should be perfect uniting ourselves to him and imitating him to the utmost of our powers the proud man who trusts in himself may well undertake nothing but the humble man is all the braver that he knows his own helplessness and his courage waxes in proportion to his low opinion of himself because all his trust is in god who delights to show forth his power in our weakness his mercy in our misery the safest course is humbly and piously to venture upon whatever may be considered profitable for us by those who undertake our spiritual guidance nothing can be more foolish than to fancy we know that of which we are really ignorant to affect knowledge while conscious that we are ignorant is intolerable vanity for my part i would rather not put forward that which i really do know while on the other hand neither would i affect ignorance when charity requires it you should readily and kindly impart to your neighbour not only that which is necessary for his instruction but also what is profitable for his consolation the same humility which conceals graces with a view to their preservation is ready to bring them forth at the bidding of charity with a view to their increase and perfection therein reminding me of that tree in the isles of tylus which closes its beautiful carnation blossoms at night only opening them to the rising sun so that the natives say they go to sleep just so humility hides our earthly virtues and perfections only expanding them at the call of charity which is not an earthly but a heavenly not a mere mortal but a divine virtue the true sun of all virtues which should all be ruled by it so that any humility which controverts charity is unquestionably false i would not affect either folly or wisdom for just as humility deters me from pretending to be wise so simplicity and straightforwardness deter me from pretending to be foolish and just as vanity is opposed to humility so all affectation and pretence are opposed to honesty and simplicity if certain eminent servants of god have feigned folly in order to be despised by the world we may marvel but not imitate them 
for they had special and extraordinary reasons for doing extraordinary things and cannot be used as a rule for such as we are when david danced more than was customary before the ark of the covenant it was not with the intention of affecting folly but simply as expressing the unbounded and extraordinary gladness of his heart michal his wife reproached him with his actions as folly but he did not mind being vile and base in his own sight but declared himself willing to be despised for god's sake and so if you should be despised for acts of genuine devotion humility will enable you to rejoice in so blessed a contempt the cause of which does not lie with you End of part three chapter five